Elon Musk is preparing to launch a battery no one in the auto industry thought possible. A sodium ion pack with zero lithium, zero cobalt, and zero nickel. While China is already mass-producing its own sodium ion cells, Tesla is betting on a completely different chemistry. One designed to cut costs, boost safety, and change the game. So here's the question. Could this be Musk's secret weapon to finally deliver the Model 2 under $17,000? Could it break China's dominance in batteries and reshape the EV market for good, especially in the US? And most importantly, what does this mean for you, the drivers looking for an affordable, safe, long-lasting EV? That's what we'll unpack in today's video. And before we dive in, our channel is closing in on 11,575 subscribers. If you enjoy clear, no-nonsense EV updates that cut through the hype, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell. Don't just watch the future of cars, be the first to know it. How can NFPP sodium ion outperform today's lithium batteries? Tesla's bet centers on a chemistry called sodium iron phosphate pyrophosphate, or NFPP. Unlike conventional batteries, it contains no lithium, cobalt, nickel, manganese, or rare earth elements, eliminating the supply chain chokehold that keeps most automakers tied to China. Instead, it uses abundant materials, sodium derived from soda ash, iron, phosphorus from phosphate rock, carbon for the anode, and aluminum as the current collector. That shift alone is massive, because it means production could be scaled with resources readily available inside the United States. On a molecular level, NFPP is built for stability. The cathode's crystal structure is resistant to breakdown and does not release oxygen, which removes the root cause of thermal runaway. This is a battery that doesn't catch fire, doesn't explode, and can be drained to 0% without damage. Its discharge window runs from 4 volts down to 2, giving engineers more accurate state-of-charge readings than lithium-ion. It also keeps performing in brutal conditions, down to minus 40 degrees Celsius and up to 60 degrees, thanks to an electrolyte that allows sodium ions to move freely even at freezing temperatures without forming dangerous dendrites. The engineering advantages stack up quickly. NFPP cells don't need complex liquid cooling or HVAC systems. They can rely on passive thermal management slashing parasitic energy losses by as much as 90% compared to lithium-ion. Their cycle life is remarkable. Full 100% depth of discharge cycles with minimal degradation, making them ideal for both vehicles and grid storage. They can even be shipped at zero state of charge, unlike lithium packs that must be held at around 30% and treated as hazardous cargo. With no moving parts, no need for fluid top-offs, and roughly 20% lower cost than the best lithium systems on today's market, NFPP offers a compelling case for mass deployment. The geopolitical angle is just as important. While current lithium, cobalt, nickel, and manganese supplies are dominated by global mining and refining controlled largely by China, where 60 to 70% of lithium, 70 to 80% of graphite, and 90% of manganese are processed, the sodium, iron, and phosphorus required for NFPP can be mined and refined domestically. Wyoming, for example, holds the world's largest reserves of soda ash, giving the U.S. a unique chance to localize production and break away from dependence on Chinese supply chains. Where does it fit in practice? NFPP is being positioned primarily for grid-scale energy storage, where safety, cost, and durability matter more than packing maximum range into a vehicle. But the chemistry's potential doesn't stop there. Its energy density falls short of nickel-manganese cobalt cells used in luxury EVs, but it matches lithium-iron phosphate packs that already power mainstream cars. That makes it a candidate for affordable EVs, giving Tesla the building block it needs to hit the $17,000 Model 2 price point. In fact, the largest NFPP system in the U.S. is already online, tied into Montana's Flathead Electric Cooperative, while China has pushed forward with a separate 100-megawatt-hour sodium-ion project in Shenzhen, using a different oxide-based formula. 
the company driving much of this NFPP work in the U.S., is Peak Energy, a Colorado startup founded in 2023 by former Tesla and NRG engineers. It holds patents, has built demonstration units connected to the grid, but still lacks the manufacturing scale of Chinese giants. Its domestic rival, Natron Energy, is pursuing a different sodium ion chemistry aimed at data centers. Overseas, CATL and BYD are pouring billions into sodium ion development, focusing on PBA-based chemistries with mass production slated for 2025. The contrast is clear. China is racing to scale while Tesla and Peak Energy are trying to differentiate through chemistry. The long-term vision is that sodium ion could finally deliver what Elon Musk has been promising for years. An EV that is good enough, with 200 to 250 miles of range, a safer battery, longer life, and a price tag that truly makes electric cars accessible. Whether NFPP becomes Tesla's ace in the hole or remains a niche solution will depend on how fast production can scale. But one thing is certain, the industry is watching closely because this is no longer just theory, it's already being tested in the field. And here's where it stacks up against the competition. NMC cells dominate premium EVs because of their high energy density, giving 300 to 400 miles of range, but they're extremely expensive and tied to cobalt and nickel supply chains that are not only toxic to mine, but also highly volatile in price. Worse, they're prone to thermal runaway, which is why fire recalls keep making headlines. LFP packs, on the other hand, cut costs and improve safety, making them popular in mass market EVs, but they still depend on lithium, and nearly 70% of global refining happens in China. That leaves automakers vulnerable to geopolitical bottlenecks and price swings. NFPP sodium ion doesn't just sidestep those issues. It uses sodium, iron, and phosphate that can be sourced locally, reducing costs by roughly 20% versus the best lithium systems, while offering superior thermal stability and cycle life. The trade-off is lower energy density than NMC, meaning 200 to 250 miles of range instead of 350 plus, but for affordable EVs and grid-scale storage, that balance of cost, safety, and independence could be the real disruptor. Would you trust a battery that doesn't catch fire and lasts longer for your everyday car? If you agree, comment sodium ion below. And share, what's your biggest concern about EV batteries today? Don't go anywhere because we have more to come. Why Tesla's NFPP could outlast CATL's sodium ion rush. China's battery giants CATL and BYD are racing ahead, unveiling their second-generation sodium ion cells under the Naxtra brand and preparing for mass production by late 2025. They've already shown off real-world scale with a 100-megawatt-hour project in Shenzhen, and their packs are undeniably cheap and safe compared to NCM. On the surface, it looks like an unstoppable advance. But here's the catch. The Chinese designs lean on oxide-based PBA chemistry, a shortcut that cuts cost today but sacrifices long-term stability, cycle life, and efficiency under stress. In other words, Naxtra might be good enough for entry-level EVs or grid storage, but it's not engineered for durability or precision performance. Meanwhile, Korean competitors, LG, Samsung, SK On, are struggling to adapt. Their sodium ion roadmaps don't even target commercialization until 2030, and their global EV battery share has already collapsed from over 30% in 2021 to just 16.4% in 2025, while China has soared to nearly 78% dominance. The battlefield is clear. Cheap, fast-to-market Chinese packs versus lagging Korean incumbents. This is where Tesla's Model 2 flips the script. Instead of chasing volume like KTL or waiting like Korea, Tesla is building around NFPP chemistry, a sodium iron phosphate pyrophosphate system designed for unmatched safety, durability, and U.S. sourced independence. NFPP cathodes remain stable under extreme stress, don't release oxygen, and can safely discharge to 0% without damage. 
something oxide-based rivals can't match. Add in its ability to function from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius, with no dendrite formation and no thermal runaway, and Tesla's sodium ion instantly becomes the most abuse-tolerant chemistry ever aimed at mass-market EVS. And the payoff? The Model 2 could hit the road with a 200 to 250 mile range at under $17,000, with a pack that costs about 20% less than today's best lithium systems, all while being built from materials mined and refined in America. No dependency on Chinese lithium, no waiting for Korean labs, no shortcuts on safety. CATL may pump out sodium ion cells first, but Tesla is preparing a battery platform that could outlast out safety, and out economize every rival, making the Model 2 not just another budget EV, but the only affordable EV that doesn't compromise on independence or performance. So, in the end, here's the real takeaway. While CATL and BYD are racing to flood the market with cheap sodium ion packs, and Korea is still years behind, Tesla is taking the harder but smarter path. By betting on NFPP, Musk isn't just chasing numbers. He's building a battery that's safer, more durable, and made with materials that can be sourced right here in America. And that's exactly what makes the Model 2 different. Not just another budget EV, but potentially the first truly independent, affordable electric car for the global market. Now I want to hear from you. Would you choose a car with 200 to 250 miles of safe, stable range at under $17,000? Or would you still prefer a longer range but riskier lithium model? Do you think Tesla's NFPP chemistry is the real breakthrough to beat China's dominance? And most importantly, if the Model 2 does launch with this battery, would it finally convince you to switch to an EV? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll be reading through them. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the next big Tesla update. The future of EVS is moving fast, and you'll want to be first in line to know it.